Hi, in this tutorial, we're going to be having a look at how to create a booking form with the help of Jet Engine plugin for Elementor. So the first thing you need to do is to update your Jet Engine to the latest version since the booking form functionality has been added to the plugin pretty recently. And um, then you need to go to Jet Engine and once you click on the label of the plugin saying Jet Engine and you go to Modules Manager, you'll be able to switch this functionality on if you check this box. Then you click Save. So now we can start creating the booking form itself. But first we need to add some specific information to the post type we're going to be working with and then to the post as well. So then you go to post types and there you create one. Now here where we add meta fields, we create, let's say, I want to display the price for this specific room and um, I want to add some dynamic field that's gonna say like services so I can add some services that are specific for the uh, certain room. So the first field will be price and it's just gonna say text and we will add the price for each room manually. And the other meta field is gonna be like let's say some extras and in the type that's gonna say repeater and then in the repeater I'm gonna create one field that's gonna be let's say service one and the type I'll leave as text so I'm gonna be able to create as many services I need and then just fill in this field for each room. Right, that's pretty much it for the post type. Let's save the changes. So once we are done here, let's go ahead and fill in these meta fields for the post. So I've added some information to this post and there we have our two meta fields that we've created and the price let's say that's going to be a hundred, that's going to be the price and here in the room extras repeater we can create a new field. So like that let's add like two services. We need them here so we can later pull them out while creating the booking form and they will be displayed in the booking form as the options for us to choose. Let it be two of them and now we can publish this post. All right, there we go. And the next step is actually creating the booking form itself. So we need to go to Jet Engine, Booking Forms. Here we click Add New. And let's call it Hotel Room Booking. And let's start with creating the fields. This is just a generic field, just post ID. And in my case, I don't need this field, but let me just explain you the hidden type of field. So hidden, it's gonna mean that the booking form knows the information that is set in this field, but the user doesn't see it. For example, you might need some information that you put in the hidden fields for the calculation to occur. Then you're gonna create the calculated type of field and you're gonna put there a formula and let's say one of the components of the formula is going to be pulled out from this field hidden. So you need information from this field, but you don't want the user to see it or you don't need the user, the user doesn't need to see it. So you simply put it in the hidden field and the booking form will, will still run the calculation, but this information from this field will not be visible. So let me just delete this one. For now and you have the submit button right away and there are pretty much no settings except for the custom CSS class. You might put it in here and later if you want to style it in a very specific way you can use it to apply some custom styles. But we're gonna proceed to creating the fields. So let's just start with the name and last name. So in the type, we're gonna leave it as text, field type, also text, name, 
which should be written with no space, uh, no spaces as always. So let's just call it like that. The label will just be name. Description, you might put it in here or you might skip the description at all because it's going to be displayed in the booking form and it's going to take up some space. So if you don't want it, you simply don't put it in here, you don't write anything here. And the placeholder and default are different and the way that the placeholder is usually, this is just some tags that is visible, but it's not actually typed in in the field. So the field doesn't contain this text once you start typing, you know, it just types like in an empty field. But if you write some default, it's going to mean that some information is going to already be in the field. So you have to delete that information and write your own. So you can choose either of these two. I'm going to go with placeholder and click apply changes. Then I'm going to move it to the top. As you see, it's pretty visual. It's drag and drop and it's really easy to use. And, and another thing you can do is you can make them smaller like that. So let's say I want to save up some space and I want the one row of the booking form contain, say, two fields. I can easily do that if I simply make them both like smaller in half. So let's create one more field that's gonna be the last name and let's also make it smaller and let's move it to the right of the field with the name. Okay, type text, field type text. Um, so here it is pretty much the same process as with the first name. So I simply click apply changes. So there we go, we have two fields already. And let's create something different. Let it be email this time. So the type will be text again and the field type is gonna be email this time. And the field name email. Now one more thing I want to add to my booking form is the option to choose how many people or how many persons are gonna be staying in this room. So I click add one more field and based on the information from this field we're gonna be able to calculate the total price. So let's say I want the price that I've set in the field called price here in the hotel rooms post type. I want this price to be multiplied by the number of persons that's going to be staying in the room. And I can later easily do that using the calculated type field. But for now, what we're going to need to do is to create a type of the field with the number and in the name, we'll do it like that. Um, Then in the placeholder. Okay, the default will be 1 this time and we can also set the minimum value and the maximum value in here. The minimum value is going to be 1 and the maximum is 6. And I click apply changes. There we go. Now let's add two fields with the date information and the time information. So here in the type we select date. And here I click apply changes and add one more field. This one is going to be time. Here we can finally create the checkbox, which is going to contain the services that we have put in the meta fields in here is the choosable options. So let's select checkboxes. Here in the field name, we give the name for this particular field in the booking form. There we go. And the field options from, we have two ways here that we can go manual input and we can add options manually in here. And these are only going to exist in the booking form. 
and the matter field option allows us to pull out the um, information from the specific matter field that we already have for this specific post type. So what we're going to do is to copy the name of this particular matter field and paste it in here. There we go. And click apply changes. The other way you can work with the, the same checkboxes, for example, but also with the radio, select fields by pulling out information from either the meta fields or from the manual input. And let's now create the checkbox with the manual input type. And we'll leave it as manual input. One more important thing while creating the type, for example, checkboxes, is to uncheck the required option in here. So it allows you to select not all the values at once while filling in the booking form, but let's say leave one of them unselected. So we have to uncheck the required fields and let's apply changes and save it. And then we need to get back to the extra services and also uncheck the required box. So there we go. The last thing that is left for us to do is to calculate the total price that is going to be displayed at the bottom of our booking form. Let's click Add New Field. And what we can actually do is to save up some space by like making these two fields smaller and putting them in the one row. Okay, let's arrange it a little bit better. And yeah, we have created a new field, here it goes, and this one is going to be called Total Price. And we're going to select the calculated type of field. So here goes the calculation formula. As you see, it is pretty simple and you have the basic instruction here. And what we're going to do is actually copy it and make sure that we replace these things with the actual names of our fields that we have in our either in our form in the case if we use field or in our meta field if we use meta and we actually have the meta field that is called price and we're going to pull out the information about the price of the specific room from this meta field and we're going to pull out the information about the number of people that's going to be staying in the room from the field in the booking form that is called person's number and there we go for the formula that's pretty much that and the value prefix i want to set the dollar sign and it seems like that's it for the booking form So we have set up all the fields. Um, the only thing which is left is to set up the notification settings. So here we click on the edit icon and there you see that you have a number of options in here. And I'm gonna be showing you the send email option this time. And here we have number of options and I want to send the email to the person that was filling in this booking form and to this email, right? So email from submitted form field, from field, your email, and there you fill in what the subject of the email is, then your name. And the cool thing here is that you can use macros to add specific information from the specific booking form that this person has filled right in the email, right in the letter that you are sending. So here you see that it has updated the list of available macros, 
based on the fields that you have created for your booking form. So these are the macros that I have in my form. So what I can say here, um, like persons and then copy the persons number macros and paste it here. And it's going to say persons colon, and then it's going to say the information from the field that is called uh, persons number that has the name persons number. And like you can go on and I think it's pretty much clear and let's click apply changes. So we have saved the settings for the notifications and we're pretty much done with creating the booking form here and let's click publish. So our booking form has been published. Now it is time to actually look how we can display this booking form on the page using Elementor editor. And what I'm going to do now is to create a single page template and then add there this booking form. Or you can actually go another way and you can add it to a pop-up and the pop-up is going to be triggered by the button on the single page template, which is also a great way. But this time I'm going to go with displaying it on a just a single page template. So now to be able to add some dynamic widgets in here, let's go to settings and then the conditions, I'll select the entire site or you can go to singular and specify it for the specific post type and for the specific post, uh, but I need to set the preview now. And it's hotel rooms. And there it goes. Right, so now let's start adding the dynamic widgets. All right, now it's time to add the booking form on the right of the room itself. So let's search for the booking form widget. It's going to be right here in the Elementor panel. And I drop it right there. And in the select from drop down, I have the list of the booking forms that we have created on our website. And the fields layout, so you're allowed to choose what layout you prefer. And of course you have the style settings, a lot of them in here. As you see for each type of the field like calculated, checkbox and radio for the submit button. And you can go ahead and style your form the way you like. And you can also choose the submit type. It's either Reload or Ajax. So if you choose Ajax, you're going to see the notification if the form is submitted successfully or not right away on the button click. So the page, the user is not going to need to reload the page to wait for the page to reload to see what the result of them submitting the booking form was. So that's pretty much that. So while checking the form, make sure that you fill in all of the forms that are marked as required with the asterisks here. And also as we increase the number of persons, we see how the total price grows. And so we know that our formula in the calculated field is working. So now we click book now and now it displays us that the form was successfully submitted without even reloading the page because the Ajax method is working. So this is pretty much it for this tutorial on how to create a booking form with the help of the new booking form functionality that has been added to Jet Engine plugin for Elementor. So I hope this tutorial was useful and I thank you for watching.